In this next section, we're going to focus on guided network troubleshooting within the Realize Network Insight. So with guided network troubleshooting, we've created a three-step workflow to guide users through the troubleshooting process. First, we start off with either an application, a virtual machine, or an event, or other constructs such as NSXT Edge, VMC SDDC, and more. Second, we provide a dependency graph that allows the operator to navigate the relationships between physical devices, overlay, underlay, flows, and applications. Finally, VRealize Network Insight uses AI and machine learning to statistical correlate metrics, events, and changes to highlight any branch or entity where an anomaly has been detected. Users then view the curated metrics and data to gain deep insight and find the root cause sooner. So basically, the complexity is simplified to a mind map of network and application to where dependencies. Knowledge of what is abnormal and the data supporting the anomaly is displayed. In the meantime, to insight is significantly reduced as a byproduct of the reduced complexity. Improved knowledge share and quick access to current and historical information. So let's take a look at how we accomplish this within v Realize Network Insight. So the first step here is going to be to go to either the dashboard or through the navigational pane to be able to go over and select troubleshooting. So on the navigational side, we can come over and we can go under troubleshooting and we can either start new incident or manage incidents. We can also come up and type in just troubleshooting incident up in the elastic search bar to be able to also to launch into a troubleshooting incident. This is the guided network troubleshooting dashboard. Here you're going to see a list of the status of current troubleshooting incidents, whether they're in progress, resolved or unresolved. You're also going to see the entity type in regards to the troubleshooting process, whether it's an application, an alert or others. And you're also going to see top root causes. This is going to be related to things like network traffic rates, CPU usage, sessions, etc. Further down, you're going to see a list of the incidents, whether they are currently being worked on or if they've been resolved or if they've not been started. So this will show you an overview, as you can see on the left, under the incident name, the name of the incident, the entity type, whether it's a router, an application, a tier, a virtual machine, etc. You're also going to see the entity name that it's focusing on. You're going to see the status, whether it is unresolved or in progress or has been resolved. And then you'll also see an indicator if there's any notes that have been inputted from system admins, whether it's a networking admin or security admin or virtual admin or cloud admin that are working on the specific incident. If a root cause is identified, you're going to see that the number of root causes that have been flagged for identification within the guided network troubleshooting. You're also going to see the time range that the incident is being troubleshot for. So specific incidents are obviously going to take place in the past or at current time, and you're going to see the date and time that the data set is focusing on for that troubleshooting exercise. You'll also see the last time the ticket's been updated, who created it, and then we also have management of being able to edit that incident, forward it, or share it, or delete it. Now we also have a start new where we can launch in and also start a new incident if we wanted to. And then you can also filter through the various different pages down here if you have many incidents logged within the system. Now we can also take a look at when we're starting a new incident, it's going to come up and it's going to ask us to choose a scope. Again, I mentioned various different objects that you can choose to focus on your troubleshooting incident, whether it's an application, tier, virtual machine, or many other devices. You can also look at alerts within VRealize Network Insight, and you can decide if you want to launch a troubleshooting incident inside the Guided Network Troubleshooting Dashboard based off of that specific alert. So here I can see an analytic threshold alert, and I can see what it was detected for, and I can see what that alert is. This is basically something that's looking at traffic on the network, and it's also seeing that the normalized traffic shouldn't exceed 100 bytes, and it is, so it's an active alert, 
I can come over and click the troubleshooting button and launch into a troubleshooting incident based off of that alert and the selected criteria from a scope perspective within that alert. And I also can, on any dashboard within vRealize Network Insight, if it, you see the troubleshooting button available, that means you can launch a troubleshooting incident right off that dashboard of the object that you're focusing on. Lastly, if you're looking at a list of objects, such as SDDCs as an example, there'd be like VMware Cloud on AWS or AVS, etc., and you can launch a troubleshooting incident based off of that SDDC. So moving on to the guided network troubleshooting in regards to the incident dashboard. So once we're inside an incident, we're gonna get an overview of the status, whether it's been resolved or if it's in progress or it has not been started, the root cause metrics, the root cause alerts. We're also gonna see incident info, when it was created and so on, and who created the incident. We're also going to see the start entity. We're gonna see the traffic and any distribution change, the number of flows, and we're also gonna see if there was any past incidents. So this, we can use these past incidents to look at what occurred in the past on a previous troubleshooting exercise to determine if this is a similar incident and look at the notes to determine what was the root cause and get quicker insight into resolving the current incident. We're also gonna see the time range here, and this can be adjusted. You're also gonna see your analytics, whether it's utilizing single metric or multi-metric analytics. And you're also gonna see the medium level. So this is gonna be the sensitivity level of the metrics in regards to anomalies that you realize Network Insight found. So you can adjust these uh, based on the application or the actual construct that you're focusing on to determine if it's being too sensitive and calling out anomalies and you want to adjust it to a lower sensitivity, you can always adjust that. By default, it'll always be at medium. We're also going to get our dependency graph here. So we're focusing on the Locust app in this case, and then it's breaking it out and showing us a mind map, basically, of how many VMs make up that application, the hosts that are used for that application, flows. If there's NSXT in the infrastructure, it's going to show us the edges, the transport nodes, we're also going to see the top rack switchboard that the applications or the members of the applications traverse and also to see if there's any issues there. The services, the VMC SDDC, if this is within a specific SDDC, and the SDDC group. Any of these that are lit up red have, are indicators that there's anomalies detected within vRealize Network Insight. And we can click into these to dive into those anomalies. As you can see over here on the right side, with the metrics, and we can see where it says anomaly found 41. Root cause two, and there's one metric that has been flagged. So we can see over here the anomalies that are called out, whether it's read latency, write latency, read rate, network traffic rate. We can go through these and we can see what was occurring at that time. If we feel that it's the root cause or we feel it's something that we want to flag to look into, we have the option over here either to tag it as the root cause or click on the flag to flag that for later investigation. Finally, down at the bottom here, you're going to see alerts. This is going to show us where we've actually seen alerts that have occurred in correlation to the metrics and when we've actually seen anomalies. So little blue circles like this is going to indicate a change alert. So something changed and we can click on that to look and see what changed, when it changed, whether it's in the overlay or the underlay. Any type of red indicator on the dotted line is going to indicate an actual alert that is tripped. And that could be an analytical alert, that could be uh, something going down, uh, let's say a switch port going down as an example, or high packet drop or high latency. And we can click on that and look at the alerts associated at that specific time and correlate it to the actual metrics. You'll also notice that we provide insights. So Network Insight will automatically look and provide any insights that it feels it needs to be called out. In this example, we can see that it's calling out the, we can see that it's calling out the network traffic rate of a virtual machine here is correlated with the traffic rate of another virtual machine. And we can also see from a port to port flow communication perspective on 2049 on the port and this is related to a flow. And then we can click on analysis to look at those details.
We can also go through at the bottom of each incident and we can log notes. So anyone that has access to the View Realize Network Insight Console can come in and put in notes or insights on what they've looked at or what they need somebody to take a look at, maybe in a different department. So maybe the cloud admin needs the network admin to look at a specific router. They can leave notes and then they can also leave notes that are used in correlation to what resolved the ticket. Once this is done, we can go ahead and close the incident. And that is how we actually do a guided network troubleshooting incident within vRealize Network Insight.